yes, uh, Dave Brocky in particular, you know, um, was a, he was a really big influence on me. Obviously, I, not like costume wise. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not a space monster, but the way he did things, the way he approached things, the way he, uh, his work ethic was incredible. You know, um, it was very black flag, you know, the black flag worth a work ethic where it's just like play anywhere to anyone. He would, you know, load out that all that shit out of their truck, then get in, do press, get in the costume, do a show. And at the end of the night, load it, help them load it all out because like Guar is not like, uh, they have a lot of overhead. So they don't, you know, they, they aren't employing a massive crew. A lot of the stuff that, you know, band members normally don't do, those guys do. They're constantly working, 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 working. And he was always, always working on Guar at the Slave Pit, which is their compound. You know, I go by and see him sometimes and he was either doing press or working on a costume or building a new storyline, you know, or just working on music. It, it was incredible. He was always grinding on it because it was his passion. Um, and, you know, when I moved to Richmond, the first time I saw Guar, this, here's a little story. The first time I saw Guar, um, the first time I heard of Guar, I was like this 18 year old snot nosed kid who moved to Richmond to go to quote unquote, go to college, right? To VCU. I came here really, um, because they had a better scene than where I was, you know? Um, and, and I've been coming to Richmond to see shows every now and then. I'm like, I'm going to Richmond because they have great punk rock shows. <laughs> and uh, my parents weren't too thrilled with the college choice because, you know, it was an art school. But one night I was at 7-Eleven and then all these people walked in just covered in all this shit, right? And I looked at them and I was like, what happened to you people? You know, <laughs> like, what, what is going on? And they were in there getting Slurpees or whatever. And they looked at me and they said, guar. And I said, what is a guar? <laughs> and they're like, you'll see, you know, you'll understand, ask around. So they're, they're this weird band thing. So a few months later, they played a, um, they played a uh, matinee. It was an early show and a late show. And I think I went to the late show and I didn't know what the fuck they were. I didn't understand. I didn't know if they were going to suck or not. So just in case the band was boring, I took like three hits of really high quality blotter acid, high oh quality blotter God. acid. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought it was just okay acid. It turned out to be really good, really good. So I went to the show and uh, an opening band played and it was okay. I was waiting for it to kick in. And then it started to really kick in. And right as it was really kick in, the lights all went out and Guar comes in. And this place, it's a club called the Metro. We were downstairs and there isn't a backstage, right? There is no backstage. There's no side stage entrance or whatever. So they walk in, Guar walks in through the front door of the club, then through the audience wearing all their shit with like lit torches and shit. I'm peeking on acid. Wow. And I'm like, what the fuck is this dude and watch this show in complete amazement you know what I mean like what is going on I think I got I think there was this dude who didn't like me there for some reason he was an asshole I think I got in a fight with him that night because I think he hit me and I think I hit him back I think I was like did this guy just hit me should I hit him back are we fighting what is fighting what is going on? I didn't, because there's like blood and shit flying everywhere. I didn't understand what was going on. The end of the night, it was just insane, dude. I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Even without being on LSD, a Guar, Guar show will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. So after that, I was just like, oh my God, these guys are from here. And they were like these mysterious sort of characters to me. Um, I knew they were actually humans, but I was like, I got to meet these guys. And Gradually, I found out who they were. And then the first time I ever remember Dave Brocky saying anything to me, and this is great. This is kind of like why he was sort of a mentor to me, even when he was being a dick, right? We played a show at this club called Twisters. I don't know if you ever played there on Gray Street. Doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, it was a, you know, 300 capacity, you know, little, little club, 300, 400 capacity club. And uh, we opened up for like, 
cathedral or napalm death or someone like that, right? We were first on the bill and we were still called Burn the Priest then. And we had a really bad show. Nobody gave a fuck about us, right? They were just like, ugh, it's this stupid band. And you had to push your gear out through the back. And the show was packed because it was like napalm death or whatever, but nobody gave a fuck about us. So I'm pushing our, our gear out through the back, through the crowd, all sweaty and just bummed. And at the bar, they're sitting Dave Brocky, And he's got these two beautiful punk rock girls on either side of him. And he's got a drink in his hand and he's just lording it up. And he looks over and he goes, hey, Randy, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Baby. And he laughs in my face. And I was like, fuck you, Dave. Like, like little, little upset Randy pushed up like, fuck him, fuck him. And then later I realized, oh, he knows who I am. That, that's, right. that dude actually knows who I am. You know, he, the singer bar knows my name. Wow. You know, and uh, he was busting my chops. And, and the, a, a lot of those guys used to bust our chops and have some stories, but it was, it's all in love, you know, and, and they taught us a lot. So uh, I just love those guys. And it's, uh, it's interesting you watched that movie last night, because so did I.